they don't support what you do, they support why you do it. Mm -hmm. So we always put the why in front of everything. Even when you making sales, like never tell somebody the price first, always tell them the value of the product, then tell them the price. Don't put the price first and then put the value after because the only thing gonna be in their mind is the price. So like we use that approach with everything that we do, even from creating content. So the title of this session, as I said, is Impact Over Income. And so with that being said, my first question uh, for either one of you guys is, how do you balance the pursuit of financial success with the goal of making a positive impact on society? What's that, what does that balance look like? Um, I'll say from my perspective, we always talk about it is we want to continue to give as much value as possible because at the end of the day, it's always going to come back. If you continue to help, if you continue to pour into other people, they're going to continue to pour into you. So our brand has always been about giving first and receiving on the back end. And as we can see, we received a lot because we gave a lot. Literally from, the, from when we was getting started, uh, we used to go back to the schools and stuff and uh, inspire the kids to, you know, make, we made videos like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Trust in your vision, trust in your vision. I want to be a firefighter, lawyer, play sports with them because we realized when we was coming up that we was just like them and they could relate to us because when they teach us telling them to invest in stocks, invest in businesses and stuff, they don't get it because they're so older and they feel like they don't have that connection. But when us as a world of vision came in there, and we talked to them about stocks and businesses and stuff. They related to us because we was just like them. And then we was going out and playing basketball. So we used our way to give value as another way to continue to get people to understand what our brand was all about. And we say it all the time. A lot of people have whys and missions behind their brand. But what do you actually do in the real world to actually, you know, verify that? Mm -hmm. You know, we have these strong missions, but I, I challenge everybody in here as their company to go out and actually pursue that. That's why we're here today, because our mission is that we provide original designs and branded fashion to urban youth who feel stagnant and trapped by what the environment tells them what they can and cannot do. And the clothes is just the representation mm -hmm. on that. But what you really need is information. What you really need is community. What you really need is environment. And that's what our brand is putting out every single day. And that's why people wear the clothes, because it's more than just the actual tangible product, but the intangible feeling that they get from wearing it. Talk nice. Time, Slim Jim. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm going to go to you, Nick, because I saw something on Instagram, a post that you did, uh, I believe, where you were talking about uh, flossing and taking pictures, fancy cars and things like that. And then once when you guys started actually telling your story, that's when you actually started seeing the growth. So the specific question as it relates to um, that is just basically, can you share an example of a time when prioritizing impact? over income led to long-term benefits for your business? Uh, really going viral on TikTok. I remember when, like, the first time we posted us, like, in our apartment, like, showing mm -hmm. exactly what we was doing, like, folding T-shirts. Uh, I feel like somebody had their shirt off. We were stacking them on the shelf. And, like, that video just went crazy on TikTok. And then I just started, like, I'm like, man, they really loving this story. Um, like, if you really, if you scroll all the way down our Instagram, you're going to see us like at like a Lamborghini dealership, like posting our product yeah. in front of it, putting the shirt on the car and like our brand wasn't anything. Like we probably wasn't even making a thousand dollars a month. But the minute we like posted that mm -hmm. organic video, like straight from our, you know, college apartment. And we said exactly what we was doing in that video. Like people started to support that rather than supporting the thing that we thought they was going to support from the jump. And uh, Marlon put me on this book and put the whole team on this book mm -hmm. called Star Wars Why. I think it's like Simon Sinet. Uh, and in that book, it talk about, y'all hear, hear us talk about it all the time. People support, they don't support what you do, they support why you do it. Mm -hmm. So we always put the why in front of everything. Even when you making sales, like never tell somebody the price first. Always tell them the value of the product, then tell them the price. Don't put the price first and then put the value after because the only thing going to be in their mind is the price. So like we use that approach with everything that we do, even from creating content. And y'all still see it to this day. Every YouTube video, we come on that thing where we say, we started our brand with 12 mm -hmm. shirts and $120. And that's exactly like how we got started. And that's exactly the story we want you to know because like it ain't happened overnight. Like right. it really happened because we was grinding, getting it. The first time we ever paid our employees, it wasn't with money, it was with lunch. Like we paid them with $5 lunch at that. Wow. And that was how we was able to get our brand started. So. 
I would say social media, like going crazy on social media was like one of the biggest things that we was able to do when we shared our story first and our why first. So from that post that I did see on Instagram, where where were the, if you can share, where were the sales like before you made it and then after you started telling the why, like what was that increase like? So where attention goes, money flows. All right, so first I like the wait, hold on. Did y'all get that? <laughs> Say that again because she's taking notes. That was a where point attention point. goes, <laughs> money flows. So first and foremost, like we didn't have any, like we didn't have any followers. Like we thought when we got to 10,000 followers, we thought we was like gonna be on. <laughs> we was like, we literally on if we get the 10,000 followers. And I feel like we was trying our hardest to get that. And that's why it was like that tough. Cause we thought we was gonna post this fly stuff like you're saying to get mm -hmm. there. But I would say sales wasn't like, you could go watch the video, what got is dope. That was at the same time. Our sales wasn't at a thousand dollars a month at all. Mm -hmm. Like, but then when we start sharing our story, our followers start going up mm -hmm. and we start getting more traction to our website. So we always say, like a lot of people always say, like, I ain't getting no online sales, but in reality, like you're not getting enough online visitors. So when we were sharing our story, they was able to come follow us. The followers started turning into clicks to our website. And then those clicks started turning to sales conversions. So I would say after we start telling our story, followers went from. 10,000, not even 10,000, we got to 10,000, then went to 20,000. We, we grew like 100,000 followers, followers off month. that one story, wow. off that one wow. story. And it actually, because it actually wasn't that specific mm -hmm. video mm -hmm. that we posted, it was more on the lines we had, uh, it was COVID going on, and everybody was supporting the black businesses. Yeah. And uh, we had a post uh, where I was sitting at the kiosk that was like, no more designer brands, yeah. support this black owned brand. And, and literally yeah. we, went, we grew 100,000 followers in 30 days. Yeah. Wow. And those those followers, like I said, just turn into, they click in your site mm -hmm. and a visitor's gonna turn into a buyer. Brand owners that's ready to acquire their first 100 customers and make over $1,000 every single month, this is for you. We have created our Activate Your Vision University. We have been working on this for the last four months. And inside of this university, it has every system that we have created and are currently using to continuously scale our brand, World and Vision, right now. Yes, you're gonna get the Facebook ads. Yes, you're gonna get the email and text message marketing play. But ultimately, I want you to join our network of brand owners for only $7 for seven days. Now, at the end of these seven days, let me go ahead on and break the news to you. We will not charge your card like other most subscription-based programs, all right? We will allow you to experience and enjoy these seven days without having you thinking on the eighth day, oh, I'm about to get charged. No, this is not that. We want to see if you are a good fit for the network, and we will also want to see if we are a good fit for you to help you scale and help you grow to, like I say, acquiring your first 100 customers and making over $1,000 every single month. Click the link somewhere on the screen. Get access for only $7. Every brand owner, every clothing brand, we can help you scale. Let's get it. Because even though it was, you know, COVID at the time, and I know a lot of Black-owned businesses saw, um, you know, were able to, saw, saw a lot of success, um, it's one thing to bring them in but then is what you're selling uh is it is it valuable you know is it quality because we even talk about that a lot even with the the chips mm -hmm. you know it's it, there's the novelty there and it's exciting and it's it's like the hot and sexy and the bags are so cool but it's like is the product actually good because you can probably get them in on that one sale because oh, i want to support this black owned business but what's going to keep them coming back. Mm. And so the product has to be good. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, my next question to you is, I do want to know what metrics do you use to measure social impact? Because I know that revenue, obviously that's a, that's a metric that we can use. Um, but is it like, what do you what do you use to let you know that the social side is really working? Is it you know increasing that database? Is it the SMS growing? Like what what is that? It's this right here. Like two years ago, wow. you know we was putting on events and we probably had five people there. You know what I wow. mean? And it's just consistently doing that, and now you are giving so much value out in the world that people want to come and be a part of this community and join what we're doing and continue to help in any type of way that they have. So we know that it's working because this is growing each and every day. And our, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube subscribers are growing and our community is growing. And the the feedback that we get from everybody else allows us to know that it's actually working. When we go in a different city, 
from Dallas to Atlanta to Houston mm -hmm. to DC to wherever we go and somebody tell us, oh, I will see you on YouTube. Oh, I joined your community. Oh, I came to one of your events. I missed the last event. I wanted to come, but I'm at this one. Right. Uh, that's how we know that it's actually working. It's not, you know, social media telling us that. It's the people that's in these rooms that's telling us that. And I think something else is uh, the partnerships that you're building. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Rap Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is uh, this is good. Um, my next question is, how do you engage and motivate your team to prioritize uh, impact alongside income in their daily work? Uh oh, I'm mad. Marlon, take that because because me, my team, we get stuff done, but we be chilling too. But in reality, like I would just be real with y'all. Like me, like I'm like I'm very driven on the things that I do for the business as far mm -hmm. as like designing, uh, uh, advertising, promotion, like uh, like we saying, growing the following, like convert sales. Let me just start sales in general. So like our team, I would say, well, my team, what I would say is, I, 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 I tell them as long as we bring in sales, like that's what truly matters. Now, of course, Marlon get on me about, we gotta do it within this time frame because mm -hmm. I'm the one that will work at two in the morning instead of six in the morning. Yeah. But uh, with me, it's like, as long as we like getting done the things that we need to get done and, and turning that into sales and not just like us just eating the clock up and not producing anything or getting any results, results is how the team on my side is being driven. But from Marlon's perspective, he really helped me out a lot as far as structure and organization because I never was a person that like worked on a schedule. Like I get up at any time, I do what I need to do and I think that that's productive, but in reality, like Marlon helped me move with speed and efficiency. So you could be, you could you could think that you're doing stuff and you could think that you're being busy, but at the end of the day, like Marlon said, it's about the results that you're getting from it. So that's that's what I'm driven by and that's what I drop my, my side of the team by. And then um, from my end, uh, we really just want to inspire like our team to understand, like even if they're in fulfillment and they're touching the package that's going to the customer, they're making an impact because when that customer getting it, they, they're not saying, oh, Marlon and Nick sent me this package. Mm -hmm. They're saying World and Vision sent me this package and all of us are World and Vision mm -hmm. or Activate Your Vision. So everything that we're doing is impacting the brand itself, which you are a part of. And we have to take some type of leadership and, you know, we put ourselves like in perspective of the things that we teach in our team, we want them to understand that it's bigger than what we actually doing yeah. right here. It's a impacting way more people than what we really think is impacting. And then from the side of even inside of our team, realizing that we come in here and we have a unique opportunity. Like, and it's crazy just on our end for me to impact the team in a way where it's people that's paying for college that's working with us. It's wow. people that's starting mm -hmm. different businesses that's working with us. It's people that's learning different things, changing their whole mindset, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, becoming successful and doing different things. So it's different ways that the brand impact people in, within the company and how we impact the customer within the company. I like that. Yeah. What's, what's that thing you said? We play for the... We play for the name that's on the front of the jersey and not the name that's on the back. I know oh, that's right. 